Hey, 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 it's me. You know what? I'm not doing that. Hey guys, it's me again. I hope you all enjoyed my Doki Doki Literature Club video. That video was like six months in the making, so I hope it lived up to expectations if they even existed. But if you haven't seen it already, or if you're new here, go check it out. No biases, I think it's a pretty damn good video. Just click or tap on the little eye at the top right of the screen. Anyways, enough yapping, let's get into the actual subject of this video. Throughout the years of gaming, there have been many single player games that have boss fights, and there have especially been games with extremely difficult boss fights. We've seen it everywhere, most notably in games like Elden Ring, Sekiro, Ghost of Tsushima, and any other game of that nature. But today I want to tell you all about a very underrated boss fight in gaming. This fight is so intricately detailed and difficult that I think it's worth mentioning in a discussion of best boss fights in gaming. I could even argue that it is the definite greatest boss fight in gaming history. Oh yeah. I'm not kidding. Now just listen! I know you're looking at this image and are thinking, Lemon, be for f***ing real right now. There's no way you're saying that this is one of the best boss fights ever. And listen, your worries are valid. You probably think I should be put in a mental ward. But I promise you by the end of this video, you're also going to end up in the same ward as me. So buckle your seatbelts because there's a lot to go over. This is my coverage of the Necromancer. <laughs> Before we go over the actual boss fight itself, of course we have to talk about the game that it comes from. Castle Crashers. If you owned an Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 during the peak of the era, you've probably more than likely played or at least heard of this game. But if you're among the few who haven't, Castle Crashers is an arcade-style, side-scrolling, hack-and-slash game released in 2008. It was developed and published by the Behemoth, and it was released on any platform you can think of. Nintendo Switch? Got it. PlayStation? Got it. Samsung Refrigerators? Okay, that's the only one. Anyways, it's mainly focused on combat and also some fantasy elements. This is also probably my favorite childhood game that I've ever played. Now, of course, this isn't a review of the game, but I mean, if y'all want me to make a review of the game, I will. <laughs> I'll just be going over the relevant things that relate to the boss fight we'll be talking about. The Necromancer. Now, don't let the simple cartoonish look of this game mislead you. This game could take months for you to fully grasp and understand, but lucky for you, I'm here to guide you through everything. Now, why am I the reliable source here? Uh, uh, I don't know. I never counted. I am not really a math guy, you know? So now that you at least know the backstory to this game, I can go over who the Necromancer is and how his fight functions. The Necromancer is a right-hand man and the main villain of Castle Crashers, the evil wizard. He first appears in Lava World and he's able to revive people from the dead, either as skeletons or normally if their bodies are still intact. He's the 12th boss fight in Castle Crashers and also the second to last fight in the entire game. He is by far the most difficult fight in the entire game and his fight takes place in the second to last level wizard castle interior in his own arena which is full of the dead corpses of 90 percent of the enemies we fought throughout the game and some that we fought alongside with side note this guy's whole vibe is just menacing and badass and i might sound like an actual infant for saying that but his design arena and just overall everything that's established about him makes it so unfortunate that he isn't the final boss of the game fun fact he's also unlockable by beating the industrial castle level on insane mode which i think that's only for the remastered version but i could be wrong speaking of insane mode i'm going over the insane mode version of this fight and not the normal mode version i'm going to be using a playthrough i recorded for this video to explain to you what strategies i implemented to be able to beat this fight without special items specifically the potion and i'll also use videos from the worst cc to make points regarding the fight so shout out to him to better help you understand what exactly is happening i need to explain the mechanics of the game first weight classes. There are three main weight classes in the game. Lightweights, medium weights, and heavyweights. These weight classes also have specific juggle combos dedicated to them, which I will get to in a moment. Before I go over what we as the player can do, I want to get into the mechanics of the enemies we fight throughout the game, starting with their battle formation. First is the chaser, which, 
as the name implies, chases and attacks a player for as long as they are alive. Then we have the two supports, one is positioned above and to the right of the player, and stays in that position as the player runs around. They usually throw projectiles at the player in the form of bombs or arrows. The second support is positioned directly behind the player. Do keep in mind that the supporter's positions can vary depending on the position of the player. For example, the second support can also sit in front of the player under the first support. They don't toss projectiles at the player, they just sit back and wait for an opportunity to strike. Anyways, those are the main three enemy positions the chaser and the two supports. Any extra enemies that spawn in will be designated to the roamer role. Roamers run across the entire arena and attack the player at any opportunity they get. They run diagonally which makes it very hard to start combos on them. Unless you're able to perfectly start a combo on one of these guys, you're not really focusing on them. And one last thing, when you kill an enemy, depending on the order that they spawned in, their roles change. So for example, if you killed the chaser, the enemy that spawned right after them, aka the first support, will then become the chaser. There are also what's called beefy enemies. These are enemies that are larger in size and have their own weight classes as well, but are slightly heavier than their shorter counterparts. Beefies can also be assigned the same role as normal enemies. The only difference is when they are designated as the first support, the one that tosses projectiles, they don't toss projectiles. They don't have that ability. So instead, they also wait. But the big threat about beefies is the grab mechanic. When a beefy is flinched, they gain the ability to grab us out of the air, even if we're way above them, cancel our combo, and throw us back to the ground. They don't innately have that ability. They must be flinched to gain it even if not by the player. One more thing before I get into the combat of the game, every enemy, no matter their role, have a random chance to do what I call repositioning. Repositioning is when the enemy either rolls or sprints at random occurrences. When they roll, they gain invincibility for that brief moment, so starting a combo on them is impossible, but this maneuver that they do is meant to throw the player off. The only enemies that don't do this are beefy enemies. But now that the enemy battle formation is out of the way, I can start explaining how we, as the player, can battle against all of these guys. There's a lot of potential combos to use, but I'll just go over the combos that I use in my run of the fight. First, we begin with the basics. There are melee attacks and magic attacks. For the melee attacks, we have light attacks and heavy attacks, which also have aerial counterparts. The aerial attacks are what we're going to be focusing on, since doing ground combos will get you killed in the fight. By the way, if you want a more in-depth and better explanation of juggling, The Worst CC has a video going over every juggle in the game, so if you're interested, the link is in the description. First up, the lightweight juggle. And to make this easier, I'll refer to heavy attacks as just heavy and light attacks as light. The lightweight juggle consists of light, light, heavy, heavy. Or alternatively, it can be heavy, heavy, light, light. It doesn't matter as long as you cycle between those two combos. This combo not only has a lot of DPS, it keeps the enemies in the air when you do the first heavy attack by slamming them down and essentially using the ground as a trampoline, thus making this combo an infinite combo, which of course, obviously, means it can be done for as long as you want it to be. This combo is not very effective against medium weight enemies, but is somewhat effective against heavyweight enemies. But those weight classes have their own designated combos anyways. But speaking of those combos, now we move on to the medium weight juggle. Now medium weights cannot be infinitely comboed. This is because they have a special effect where they become heavier every time you attack them in the air, and there's no limit to this. So the goal of the medium weight juggle is to keep them in the air for as long as we can. And we do this by starting with light light, heavy heavy, light, heavy, heavy, which we do twice, and as the enemy gets heavier, we repeat light, heavy until they are on the ground, making sure not to do it too fast or else we'll do the buzzsaw attack, which will break the combo. This combo is ineffective against heavyweight enemies and can be effective against lightweights, but it's better to do lightweight juggle in them anyways. Another thing is the light, heavy attack, also known as the uppercut, have random vertical launch values, so it's random how high an enemy is launched whenever you do that combo, making juggles that utilize this combo not 100% consistent. Now we get to the heavyweight juggle. Heavyweight enemies can be infinitely comboed. I know that doesn't make sense, but tell that to Tom Fulp, he's the one who coded the game. This juggle is very similar to the lightweight juggle, but it adds one more move to the combo, and it goes like this. Heavy, heavy, light, light, heavy, 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 light, light. The differences here is the combo must be started with the heavy attack. You have to be very low on the ground to keep the combo going, and the extra heavy attack keeps the player low to the ground. And for the final relevant juggle, the lightweight beefy juggle. I say lightweight beefies because heavyweight beefies are impossible to juggle in single player, and medium weight beefies don't exist in the game. The beefy juggle consists of light, 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 heavy, light, jump, which makes us do this helicopter move, light, light, heavy, 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 light, heavy, heavy, and repeat. The helicopter move gives us this floating effect so that when we hit an enemy in midair, we fall to the ground instead of flying for a couple of frames after the enemy is hit. This is also a juggle that can be done infinitely. We're almost done. I feel like I've bored you all with these explanations already, so I'll speedrun the relevant magic explanations. The splash attack is good for crowd control and can be used to start beefy juggles. The magic projectile is exactly what it says. The magic air projectile is the same thing, but it shoots down at an angle. The magic jump is a magic infused jump, which results in more air time. And all of these magic attacks vary depending on what character you use. 
I'm using the Brute, my personal favorite. With that explanation finally out of the way, I'm sorry, I, you guys are probably already sleeping. I can actually begin to go over the fight itself. We start the fight in Wizard Castle Interior. First we beat down three waves of cultists, and then we have to beat two bosses in a sort of boss rush style sequence. Then we simply enter his arena, and the fight begins. Before we start, I'll quickly go over the loadout I'm using. I'm using the pig animal orb and the man catcher weapon. The pig doubles the health I gain when collecting any food item. And the man catcher has extra strength, defense, and crit chance, with no downsides. Anyways, the necromancer uses the corpse ridden area to literally revive enemies from the dead to fight against us. For the first wave, we must fight against the barbarian, Thief, Bear, Conehead, Fencer, Fire Demon, and Ninja. Now this fight has probably one of, if not the best soundtracks in the game play as you fight for your life against a wave of enemies, but as far as I know, it's copyrighted, so to be safe, I'll just be using my own background music for the fight. I begin the fight by immediately starting a lightweight juggle on the Thief, which subsequently catches both the Bear, Fencer, and Barbarian in the combo. It also briefly catches the Fire Demon, but he's a medium weight and he's only caught for a second. <laughs> After continuing the combo for a little bit, the Conehead does a magic jump comboed with the magic air projectile, which as a Conehead, the projectile is a bomb, and I was unfortunately low enough to end up being hit by it, which cancels my juggle. Now this selection of enemies matters a lot. Every single one of these enemies can cancel our juggles, as you saw with the Conehead, but when the enemies use magic and they catch us lacking, they can magic jump or splash attack us out of a juggle. Continuing on, I do a recovery jump, which is simply timing the jump button when we hit the ground, and of course, as the name implies, recover from being on the ground. This is important because standing still or staying on the ground in this fight is extremely dangerous and not doing a recovery jump puts us at higher risk of getting jumped by all the enemies. <laughs> As you saw then, the Barbarian and Thief died, which turned the Conehead into the first support, the Fencher into the second support, and the Bear into the Chaser. Also note, the Conehead threw a bomb at me, but missed and hit the Bear. Now, Friendly Fire isn't enabled on these enemies, but bomb projectiles, magic or not, are considered neutral, so they can hit both enemies and players. But I start another lightweight juggle to kill off both the Fencer and the Ninja. Here, I practice a different essential juggle for the second wave of the fight, but we're about to move on to that wave, so I'll explain it there. the fire demon with a couple of medium weight combos and all that's left is a cone head. Why start a heavyweight combo on to proceed to the next wave? Here is where this fight becomes insanely difficult. This is where things like the order the enemies spawn in plays a massive role in the difficulty and strategy. The enemies are, in order of appearance, the Saracen, Royal Guard, Alien, Beefy Bear, Snakey, Fire Demon, Eskimo, Beefy Barbarian, Beefy Brute, Conehead, and Fencer. You'll notice that there's three beefies in this wave and they are single-handedly the reason this fight is as tough as it is. Like I mentioned earlier, if beefies are flinched, they can grab us and cancel our juggles. And considering that all of them spawn in as roamers, the chances of us accidentally flinching them increases exponentially. But as you'll see in just a moment, when I try to start another combo on the alien, the beefy brute spawns right under me and is flinched. The beefy brute is the biggest threat of the whole fight, and being a heavyweight beefy, he's impossible to juggle alone. With the knowledge that he's flinched, I start a juggle on the Saracen while trying my best to avoid the brute, but I predict incorrectly and the beefy comes down and grabs me. The 
Saracen then decides he wants to do his tornado move, which makes him move across the arena with a hitbox around him, making it hard to start a combo on him. So I magic jump and fly around the arena waiting for him to stop the tornado, which he does, and I start a juggle on him. Now the juggle I'm doing is a lightweight juggle that's meant to keep us above the air away from beefies. The beefies are tall enough to be flinched by the normal lightweight juggle. It doesn't happen every time, but doing so is risky. So when beefies are close, we're forced to juggle our enemy in the air to avoid that. We also can't stay high up in the air forever, so we have to perfectly time the enemy falling to the ground and us falling to the ground to keep the combo going. And with the nature of roamers, when we fall down, we can get unlucky and have a beefy be right under us and get flinched, which happens with the bear. Also, because I know some of you may ask, no, we can't just keep doing the uppercut move to stay in the air. If we're high enough, the game will force a buzzsaw move instead of the uppercut. Anyways, the beefy bear is flinched, so I keep comboing the Saracen and eventually get thrown down by the bear. But with how many attempts this took, and my lack of grass sightseeing, I knew that the Saracen was dead. The bear was the fourth enemy to spawn in, so killing any of the enemies that spawned before him will put him in the support role. So overall, it's a lot easier to juggle him. But the Saracen being dead also means that now, the Royal Guard is the chaser. Juggling the royal guard with how many enemies remain will guarantee that a juggle will get cancelled and will take unnecessary damage. So that means we're forced to kill all other enemies until only the heavyweights remain. I used the boomerang to get some healing with the fruit, and yeah, I know what you just witnessed makes no sense, but again, go complain to Tom Fulp, I'm just a messenger here. Now with the Saracen gone, I have my eyes on both the alien and beefy bear. The alien shoots way too many projectiles to count, but he also has the least amount of health out of every enemy, so killing him is pretty easy. Right here, he's separated from all other enemies, so I juggle him to death. I catch the Ice Camo in the combo, but lose the alien who despawns and drop fruit. I decide to cancel the juggle so I can grab the fruit and be at full HP. My next target is the Beefy Bear, who I successfully won combo. Now at this point, anything goes. I'm mainly targeting the snakey, but if I see an opportunity to start a combo on any other enemy, I try, even if I miss. And to remind you, the goal here is to kill every enemy aside from the heavyweights. I'll let the recording continue for a little. While you're watching, keep in mind the goal that I have set. You'll see me attempt to start juggles and roamers. Sometimes I miss, sometimes I succeed. I'll come back when it's necessary. <laughs> So in case you missed that, off screen the conehead did his signature magic jump projectile combo. Of course he missed me, but the bomb exploded and flinched the barbarian, so he's able to grab me now. And he was flinched a moment ago, but I let him grab me and toss me since he doesn't do too much damage. In fact, he's the second weakest enemy in the whole fight. So getting grabbed by him isn't a big deal if you're worried about how much damage you'll take. But I still try to avoid him since I missed my opportunities to kill him before. <laughs> So here, I start a juggle on the Slinky, which catches the Ice Camo, so I transition from a medium weight juggle to a light weight juggle. But since the Barbarian hasn't grabbed me yet, he comes to cancel the juggle and throws me on himself and flinches himself again. But I run to the opposite side of the room. I do this a lot to try to separate the specific target from the rest of the wave, but eventually I realize that the Slinky is dead. And considering I'm at about 70% HP, I go back and grab the fruit. Now right there, I wanted to slow down the Royal Guard by hitting him in the air to knock him down, but by chance, I'm able to start a juggle on the Barbarian. I take advantage of the opportunity, and I kill him.
As I'm comboing the Fire Demon, the Conehead once again does a signature move and flinches the biggest threat in the fight for me. Thanks a lot, man. I see that, so of course I try to avoid him, but he catches me and pulls a Barbarian. And in case you didn't know what I mean, I'm saying he f tries to throw me out of bounds, but flinches himself in the process. So I'm pretty frustrated, and I decide I didn't want to deal with his grab again, and I go to let him grab me, but guess what? What if you wanted to get grabbed, but the royal guard said... Okay, so now I'm like, fine, the fire demon is near death anyway, so I can recover from this. So I focus the fire demon, kill him, and I'm able to recover some HP. But now, since the fire demon is dead, the brute finally becomes a support so he's less of a threat compared to when he was a roamer. So we're at the final stretch of this wave. Eskimo and Fencer finally out of the picture, we can start dealing with the heavyweights. Doing this is very annoying. We can't immediately start juggling the Royal Guard because if we kill him, that turns the Brute into the Chaser. And him being the Chaser makes juggling the Conehead EXTREMELY DIFFICULT! So I have to start a juggle on the Conehead and catch the Royal Guard in the same juggle, while also avoiding hits from the Brute. And because this fight has the aggression levels and speed of the enemies cranked to the max, catching them is difficult. Now with them dead, all that's left is the Brute. Since it's impossible to juggle him, I just have to spam my splash attack, and essentially play Ring Around the Rosie with him until he's dead. So that's exactly what I do. But it takes a while, so I'll just skid forward to the third wave of the fight. The third wave is where we fight the Necromancer himself. The Necromancer uses all the tools in the book. He uses magic, chases, he attacks, and he parries, and he's immune to aerial attacks. But, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, he only does, like, 19 damage. The developers didn't make the third wave of the fight more difficult for insane mode, so the Necromancer is basically a non-threat. He can be hard to start juggles on, but once you do, you're wiping like a third of his health even if you aren't able to keep the juggle going. The juggle is run right up to him, throw him upwards by holding and pressing the heavy attack button, and then essentially it's similar to the lightweight beefy combo. This is the combo that I use, and I'm 100% certain that there's a more consistent combo for the Necromancer, but I haven't cared to learn it since again, he's a non-threat, which is disappointing to say the least. But I end up killing him, and with that, the fight concludes. All we have to do is break the crystal to open up the doorway to the final fight of the game, the evil wizard. You might be asking yourself, hey, if the second to last fight of the game is super hard, then surely the last fight of the game is similar in difficulty. Uh, well, I'll answer your question with another question. Do you think a fight is difficult when you can do things like this in it? Oh, and just in case you don't believe that I didn't use potions to beat the fight, here's your proof. I know that the first and third waves of the fight are disappointing to say the least. The first wave doesn't require much skill to get through, and the third wave is only a threat if you're like level 20, which I of course was not, but that second wave? That second wave could be a boss fight in itself. And that second wave is what carries the difficulty of the fight in general. The characters that spawn, the order they spawn in, the attacks they do, the abilities they have, the abilities of the player, all of that comes into play in the second wave of the fight, and it's so fun and difficult to master. I genuinely think it's up there in terms of 
one, its difficulty, and two, how long it takes for one to learn how to even beat that second wave. It took me months to even beat the Necromancer with potions, and it took me even longer to beat it without potions. Again, in total, across two different platforms, I have about 1,000 hours in this game, and it took me many attempts to beat it. And that's not counting the four extra that I forgot to record. The developers knew just how hard the second wave of the fight was, so they didn't even give the Necromancer more HP or more damage when you fight him in insane mode. Which, by the way, almost every enemy in insane mode get 10 times their damage and HP. It's so sad to compare the first and third wave of the fight to that godly second wave. And it's even worse when you consider that the fight doesn't even have the classic boss fight health bar until the final wave. Of course, there are flaws to the fight, even the second wave. Naturally, there's RNG factors in the fight, like for example, the Brute can, although not visible, spawn in with the prongs, which have the ability to crit. So theoretically, you can take damage from the Brute and get crit by him, doing about 80% of your health in one go. Or as I've shown earlier, you can get jumped by many enemies at once and die in an instant. But nonetheless, this is still a boss fight, and it's a damn good one. This video isn't a ranking of the fight, this is just going over the strategies and whatnot, so no score for me to give here. And I'm not saying that this fight is objectively better than boss fights in other difficult games. Games. I really just wanted to talk about this fight. More specifically, I wanted to talk about the second wave. So for any Elden Ring fans or fans of any other really difficult games, don't take this as an objective truth. This is purely opinionated. But with that all said and done, we've reached the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed my glazing session of a more than likely obscure boss fight in a literal kids game, even though you can literally take the heads off of enemies. And I also hope you enjoyed watching me tackle the fight. I also probably did a terrible job at convincing you guys that this is a worthy boss fight to talk about. In the discussion of hardest boss fights in gaming but you know i just really like this fight i what what can i say but unfortunately all good things must come to an end so whether it's the morning the afternoon or the evening for you guys i hope the rest of your day today is good and i hope to see y'all next time